All right, what's going on, you guys? Hope everyone's been doing well. Today is August 30th, um, 2021. I am uh, getting in a night shave. So uh, this shave is for all of you guys um, that have been wanting a video or enjoy my videos. Um, thanks for always watching. I know it's been kind of hit and miss this year, but um, just staying busy. Um, things have been going well for, for work, for pottery. Um, so I'm just staying busy, no complaints. Um, I'm really grateful for how things have been going. I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe. Um, no real agenda today. I'm gonna do my, my shave, talk really about just the stuff that I've been kind of using and um, just kind of get you guys caught up on this different stuff I've been considering. I don't, I don't think there's any like hard agenda or anything that I'm kind of focused on telling you guys. So today I'm using Mirto di Sardinia. Um, I don't have too much bloom water in there, but um, yeah, just because the, the weather's still been um, heating up, it's been more frequent that we're kind of getting closer to like 100, um, 100 degree days um, here in SoCal. And um, so things have been, uh, th this soap it for me is a little bit better like in colder weather. Um, it does have a little bit of a green aspect to it, but um, I really am just choosing it because I haven't had a chance to use it much this year. This might be the only the second time I'm using it this year. So um, today, um, Savile Row 24 millimeter. This is um, the finest um, silver tip. So let me just make sure it really gets some of this water out. This has kind of been an interesting brush, so I'll kind of talk about it right now. Um, I'm under the impression that this is made by Burned um, in um, Germany um, from Shave Mac, and I've dealt with Burned before. And um, so I, the craftsmanship of this I like. Um, what's interesting with this specific brush is the, I, I really like 24 millimeter brushes. Um, it's not like the only size that I like. But surprisingly, this brush has a much shorter loft than I was kind of hoping for, or just the way that it feels, it's, it just seems like it's a short brush. Um, and years ago when I was working at Old Town Shaving, um, I had, you know, ordered for the store uh, a couple different models, but the, the larger and the more dense knot was a DO1 silver tip, um, three band, and it was a very dense pointy knot. Um, and surprisingly at that time, I actually really learned to, to love and appreciate that brush. Although it's like, it, it was just more dense and backbony than I really needed. So this is usually what I do. I just scrape out all the proto lather and then I just let this air dry for like a day. So, okay. So, this brush, um, I cleaned it um, using a couple different um, soaps to lather it with. Used the Ethos um, uh, cleaning supply stuff for your brush cleaner. Um, the the Shave Mac that I was referring to earlier. It took some serious time to break that brush in. And this one was kind of stinky as well. I don't think that Burned is is using hair that, like, if he gets it from China, um, I think it's also possible that he has connections with possibly getting it in certain areas of Europe. Um, I know there's a little bit more restrictions in Europe in many of the countries, which I think primarily is why most of our badger hair brushes, you know, have to kind of have a, a tie in the, you know, manufacturing steps to China. But um, the the idea with the Savile Row brush is just, you know, a generic kind of idea is that, you know, he makes these for QED. Um, I forget where QED is, it's on the East Coast. But, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, basically burned, makes these for, you know, private label. Is that the term? Private label? 
Anyway, um, this is feeling a lot better. Um, anyway, I wasn't really loving this at first. I did bleach this um, last weekend. I haven't, this is the first time I'm getting a chance to shave with it after I've bleached it. It was just a very short bleaching. Um, yeah, the tips aren't quite as scritchy, scrubby. It was a little bit, a tiny bit scritchy. Um, one of the guys that I've been talking to on Instagram, who is a, a pretty big Savile Row fan, he was telling me that he really likes a lot of his Savile Row brushes, but he was he was kind of feeling like this one wasn't quite up to the same, I don't know, like luxury feeling. He wasn't necessarily knocking it. He just, he was kind of finding it just wasn't, wasn't his favorite. So this, I'm kind of surprised having this brush, um, just two more thoughts to kind of relate it back to that Shave Mac. I don't know if that Shave Mac that I had with the, the knot plug being 28 millimeters, I don't know if the handle was um, bigger because it was the same shape that we were ordering um, for quite a few of the uh, uh, Shave Mac brushes. And I really like this handle, but surprisingly, I don't find this as big as my hands need. So it's it's a little bit of a strain to face lather. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, the heat retention on this was really good. When I was using it for those first shaves, um, I kind of went against what my rule was for years where I would really clean something and break it in ex you know, extensively before using it in a shave. And this time I was just like, I had so many of these um, brushes. A, a few of them I'll mention just a little bit later in the shave. This is looking good. I don't need to play with this too much. But Mirto di Sardinia is... Um, like nothing special. It's, uh, it's kind of one of those SV soaps that to me, it, it works exactly how it should. The beta 4.3 formula is going to give you kind of like a little bit of everything. It's going to have good slickness. The density in the body of it is really kind of what I like. It, it's, it's not overly thirsty, but, um, there, there's no tricks to it. Just load enough and hydrate it. It's, it's not finicky. Um, that's at least my experience. So, anyway, this this brush feels good. I'm glad I I bleached it. It just was a minor, uh, minor bleaching. Um, real quick. So I'm kind of been sticking with uh, pretty similar shaves. I've only I really haven't even been using the titanium handle from Carbon all that much. The stainless steel and the carbon fiber are great for me. So um, we'll be using the plus plate. This is the titanium. Uh, plus plate. It's pretty much what I've been using, but I've also been maybe like two, three weeks ago was actually using the original base plate quite a bit. Um, and then a little bit of the minus base plate a couple weeks ago. Um, I'll be honest, I can't remember if this is the Wilkinson Sword London Bridge made in England from however long ago, or if this is the Chinese Gillette London Bridge. It's, um, I have a feeling it's the Chinese version and um, I find them both to be very nice. Um, for sure, this blade's on its third use. So um, lately what I've been doing is I'll do across the grain. I've got, um, I think this is two or, well, let's see. I think th this is two and a half days beard growth. So we'll go across the grain. Um, I'll talk about blades in a little bit. Yeah, more or less been shaving daily. Every once in once in a while, I may have like a two shaves in a day. You know, like 
12, 16 hours beard growth. Those have been fun. This lather isn't rinsing quite as much, so I don't know if this is, did I under, under hydrate? Let's just wet this a little bit. Normally it doesn't happen. And I don't feel like I overloaded. Um, yeah, I just really been enjoying just. I don't know. Just no complaints with with shaves. I just can't wait for the weather to change. I use SV Colonia like so much in the last year and a half that I'm just kind of like it's it's a great choice to use for my face, the performance, and as much as I love the scent, you know, I'm just like everybody else. I, I do enjoy some variety, but that's been, that's been the one that's been used like the most and um so yeah like Mirto di Sardinia is probably my favorite scent um it's funny because Ken at Shave 326 um maybe when we were chatting he had he had kind of made a note that maybe the puck that he has that he ordered through Bull Goose had just been sitting Because he says he, he can't smell. He can't smell what this soap. Um, got to be careful I phrase that. He just he doesn't pick up much of the notes. Which I'm bummed because um, I really... Like I remember... I can't remember if... Ken's video of Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Mega Floral. Maybe I found out about that scent through one of his videos. And um, one of the things that I really like about this Mirto di Sardinia is it's, you know, it's got the myrtle, which is very kind of like green in a very broad sense, you know. Um, I don't want to say fougere, but it's just, it's got some of that freshness, some of that outdoorsiness. Um, why can't I? Th I think the top notes are like lemon, lime, lavender. Um, I don't get much of the citrus from this. Um, I, I'm sure it's in there, but the base notes to me are really what I get. Um, I do get the oak moss. That, that is it the oak moss? Um, I think that's what I get a lot of. I do get the sandalwood. So to me, um, this is probably one of the best um, scents from SV. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, like I've mentioned in my videos before, um, I'm not gonna like give myself a, a title when it comes to SV. I just will tell you guys that you know there are going to be times where I, I have a, a, a more um, pointed opinion, and it's based on I've used it a lot, so it's it's not based on uh, it's not me trying to like self-appoint, you know how much I know other other people is, you know, when you use stuff, you, you do get to know it. So, um, I was just really bummed that, that Ken's experience with this soap, um, seems like it's, it's nowhere near as what I was hoping. I mean, if he would have got it and said, I can smell some of these notes, but it doesn't excite me, then I could accept that. But I'm just bummed that his, his puck or his nose, it just doesn't kind of uh, work together. So it is what it is. Okay, hopefully this uh, soap isn't going to um, clog up, but anyway, we'll go against the grain now, because um, you guys see I didn't get the lower part of my neck, so um, if I try to limit my shaves to two passes, the across the grain pass I think works a little bit better than doing a with the grain, um, meaning that this is just more efficient to go across the grain first 
and um, sometimes the width of green is just a little too mild um, as far as getting a exceptionally close uh, shave. I remember, I think it was on Facebook, one of the groups, maybe it's Lather and Blade, someone was saying something like they, um, they really are not in favor of against the grain shaving, which I, I get, I can understand that some people it's, um, it's not worth it or it's just, uh, it's almost like a guarantee to get irritation. So it, just do what you need to. I just, I think I am a little bit more in the minority when it comes to kind of how I use the against the grain pass. I, I kind of put up with nicks and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what I've been, I haven't really been rotating a ton through soaps. soaps. I was using desert vetiver quite a bit for like a lot of evening shaves. I don't know if that was like last week, two weeks ago. That's it's a really good soap. Um, I ended up picking up my own buzzer so that when uh, I get the urge to to shave my head. I'm not going to be waiting around for a haircut appointment anymore. It's one of those things right now. I, I get that a lot of places are having trouble finding, um, you know, workers or, you know, people are kind of getting stretched thin, but I've liked the barbers that I've had. It's just whether it's the distance or the communication or the setup um, of the appointments, I just I can't seem to find something that will kind of be easy and quick. So I said, screw it. To pay for more or less um, what equates to two haircuts at the barber nowadays, I basically bought my own buzzer, and it worked well. So I had my hair quite a bit longer um, last week. So. Um, oh man. you know what I'll do for you guys? There's really, this is a pretty close shave. Um, but I will show you guys on video what I was doing like a couple weeks ago. So give me a quick second. I'll kind of explain what I'm going to do here. I'll just rinse my face. I'm going to do a third pass, but it's going to, it's going to be after the aftershave and there's not a lot. So I'll do it like here. Using the Carbon Original Base Plate, I don't really like using it against the grain. It's the one pass, um, like it's the one direction on my face where I, I personally feel like the blade shatters. So, um, yeah, just that two pass. Um, the Both the Gillette London Bridge um, from China and the uh, English uh, Wilkinson Sword London Bridge Again, I don't know if those are considered vintage or if they're like from the 80s. Um, i got to figure out where did I put my... Um... Oh, here we go. Okay. So I have the original base plate. This is the two-tone. And then usually if like I um, change out the base plates... I just kind of get in the habit of just flipping the blade just for the hell of it. So, um, yeah, again, if, um, whether you have or haven't been following me, it's, it's been really cool to, since the pandemic, excuse me, you guys, my nose is really itchy. Um, I've kind of gotten away from just using blades kind of one and done or on the shorter spectrum to really like testing blade mileage. And I would say that I'm much more excited to kind of stick with a blade for a longer amount of time. Um, I don't know if that really just comes down to like trying to get my, my money's worth out of my blade purchases. So 
I'll, I'll mention some blades in a second. I've got my kokum butter. Here we go. Um, and then I'll throw in the Mirto di Sardegna. Um, after I do the, the Mirto di Sardegna splash, I'll, I'll do that last little pass while it's still kind of slick. So while we let this kokum butter kind of sit just for a few minutes, I'll tell you guys about the, um, the brushes that I've been using. So just give me a little quick second here. I think another little project will be trying to kind of formulate a way to mix up some kokum butter with some other ingredients that may make it um, possible to put in a pump bottle. Because I've got a um, SV, um, what's it, the, what's the black glass? It's, is it the infinity glass? Um, that kind of protects like the from the UV rays or whatever, but um, I'm almost halfway through the tub of uh, kokum butter, and um, I don't think that I'm going to continue purchasing mango butter. I don't know if in the last few years my skin has kind of like continued to kind of change, but the kokum butter seems a little bit more suitable um, for everyday use. The mango butter works fine. It's not that I have any complaints. Um, it just maybe is a little bit more greasy and the kokum butter just seems to be um, what I really enjoy. I don't know. So um, here real quick, I did get the, um, this is the Razor Rock. Oh, that's the one thing about this without having the blade tabs when you go to twist this, if you have your thing on real tight, I'm kind of afraid you're going to like slip and run your fingers across the across the blade so let me I'll just hold it with my shirt but I got the 072 I shave with this maybe I just did it once um, it was a little more comfortable than the 95 but the um, I'm kind of surprised this was not as comfortable as the DLC which should have like the 0 0.61 blade gap so um, you know, again, when you guys are primarily seeing me use the carbon, the razors that still stand out is like, what would I really like if there wasn't carbon like in existence? I think the DLC Razor Rock Lupo um, is, is probably the best sh shaver for daily shaving. Um, the other one that I would consider buying again, um, not that I had it um, from a purchase, but the razor, I'm sorry, the razor that I tried on pass around the the home-like um, shave, uh, the Calabri, um, or the Hummingbird prototype, the 1.3 clothes bar, that was a killer razor. I, I think I got like two or, yeah, maybe like two shaves with that base plate, and it was like, holy hell, that was a really, really fun razor to try. Um, and then, uh, honestly, even just off of that one, two shaves with the Calabri and the Razor Rock, I prefer those over the BBS one um, for daily shaving. It's like when I got the the carbon, the plus plus base plate, I really liked. But also at the beginning of my journey, like a year, yeah, like a year and a half ago, using the carbon, I was still shaving like twice, three times a week. So with more beard growth, so that extra blade gap of that plus plus base plate is, I think, kind of what allowed me to. Um, really enjoy the most out of shaving a lot of beard. But um, now that I'm daily shaving, the plus plate really, like I could be happy just using that all by itself. Um, I think honestly, I may even start using the original base plate even more than the, um, the minus base plate or the plus plus base plate. Um, I'll have to play around with using the carbons on my head again, but the minus base plate is the only one that I use. And I think you guys can find that. What was that back in June? I, I don't remember when I did my head shave. All right, Mirto di Sardegna. I know a lot of people aren't in love with these aftershaves. Okay. Let's see. Now 
Maybe the Colonia aftershave was a little bit slicker. Just doesn't seem to have quite as much slickness as far as the aftershave. I don't know how often we're talking about that. What's the residual slickness on an aftershave? But um, I do remember, so when I was doing that, it probably was both with SV Colonia and SV uh, Desert Vetiver doing that third pass using that original base plate after using the aftershave. Um, those were some of like the closest shaves that I had, um, still with a very high degree of comfort. So I don't know. I mean, you guys have heard me say that I have sensitive skin. I don't know if we see any nicks. Um, there's enough videos of mine where I'm finishing the shave and maybe there's a couple little weepers. So, um, great shave. God, I love this smell. It's probably the most musky as far as like, um, usually that's kind of not me. It's not that I don't like it, but I'm kind of easy to please. Citrus, floral, um, like woodsy. Not that I ha those have to be like singular, but you know, something in that vein. Um, God, what was I gonna, oh, so brushes. Um, Shave Forge, Silver Tip, um, Ultra Dense, 24 millimeter. I don't know what's going on with Eric at Shave Forge. Maybe he's just kind of dealing with the fact that um, everyone's um, got supply chain issues. So I, I know he's kind of out of stock on some of these. Hopefully he's able to get them again. Um, this is the ultra dense high mountain white. Okay, so I had this one knotted in this handle um, not too long ago using the silicone. And um, the deeper loft, the higher loft, I, I didn't really enjoy the lather release. So I don't know if this knot just is too dense for me. Um, it's still a really good knot. Um, I can't. I don't think this one I didn't bleach. No, this is the one I bleached. This is just the standard um, density 24 millimeter silver tip from um, Shave Forge, but um, no glue bump. This one I did bleach um, just very lightly again. This is a really good knot. I have a feeling that if I keep it in this, you know, brush handle or whatever, this is going to be probably one of my new. Um, most used knots. Um, this is probably the best brush right now. Um, this might even beat out my original. Let's see. So these are the same. This is the old one that I've had for a long time. This is the one earlier that I got as a backup. These are like from 2014, 15. Um, Shave Revolution from uh, Justin Park. 24 millimeter um, three band high mountain white. Um, yeah, best lathering brush, um, but I tell you the 40, probably like with shipping and maybe the tax, this Yaki 24 millimeter silver tip, really, really nice brush. Just a little bit bigger feeling. The softness was there. The density, um, is really good. Um, killer brush. I'm super stoked. You know, as much as I've spent on brush, which is the majority of the investment that I've made, in shaving um, I just there's nothing to say other than you can get great brushes at really any price um, a lot of the time in my experience the brushes that are cheaper I tend to actually enjoy maybe a little bit more than some of the really expensive brushes I don't know so the other two brushes this is the one I forgot to mention in that brush video so this is the QED select Manchurian silver tip this one reminds me the most of some of the vintage um, Plisson brushes um, that have a little bit more of that. The hair has backbone. The shaping of the knot um, allows for very good face lathering. It keeps the lather moving towards the tips. It doesn't hog the lather. There is some slight like natural scritch, meaning it's not like a overly treated um, uh, type of hair. I did bleach this one just very lightly and um, I don't <laughs> I don't love this handle. The material is really cool, but it's um, It's just not it's not a uh, Super friendly shape, so I may decide to cut this 
cut this out um, and break the handle and reuse the knot. This is a really, really cool knot. Um, even with a little bit of that natural scrubber scritch, I could use it for daily shaving. I used this sometime last week. This is the Shave Revolution um, Pure Untreated High Mountain White Brush. Um, I've been kind of going through a little bit of a different routine when it comes to soaking brushes. I have been trying to get them just a little bit hotter. Um, I usually kind of say like 90 to 100 degrees is is about as hot as I try to go. Um, but trying out some of these different badger brushes, that is something that I have picked up on is the difference between how the heat retention works on some of them. And this um, Pure High Mountain White had, had good... Um, heat retention. This this Yaki brush is like the best when it comes to, I think it's just the hair is a little thinner with it being silver tip. The loft height is um, a little bit higher. Let's see, I have my calipers here, I think. I want to say this is like a 54 millimeter. Um, I don't know. But um, was there one more brush I was going to show you guys? I can't remember. But um, yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the brushes that I've been playing with and just kind of figuring out what loft to set everything out, it's it's been fun. So um, there's been a couple times recently where I'm I'm using a couple of these carbon knots. This black fiber one I kind of like more. Um, the white fiber, I don't know if this is the same type of material or if it's like a next gen version of like what was being made in Germany by Mula. Um, this one's got a little bit more backbone for people that maybe want more firmness and stiffness. Um, the black fiber to me works better with the circles. That's kind of the biggest thing is for me, this keeps the lather kind of in um, kind of that middle area of the breech. Whereas this, there's a little bit more resistance. Um, just a tiny bit more towards the tips. Um, so for me, I prefer more flow through. So this actually was kind of surprised. Both of these knots being really small and 23 millimeter, um, which is kind of a suggestion I gave to Sean. Um, but hopefully the, the loft height is something that may be a consideration for version two or, or whatever. So, um, Again, yeah, you just got to play around with finding what works best for you and not kind of letting yourself be led by the crowd. I love badger brushes. I just, uh, I don't know. Again, as much as I love and have a huge collection of them, it's still hard to beat the Green Ray. <laughs> this thing is just such a, such a cool knot. I still don't love the handle ergonomically. Um, I know people don't... I actually like this um, Mula, the HJM black fiber knot more than I like the, the Plasson. This was always a long time favorite. And I know that people find it's just, it's too floppy. It's, but uh, again, the main thing for me is like, if I've got a lot of hair growth, it doesn't make sense to use a synthetic. Um, the, the massage feel or just the resistance that you maybe want when you have quite a bit more beard that's the one box that I can't really check when I'm using a synthetic. So I like the synthetics for like a daily shave. Um, but I've kind of gotten out of the habit of just using the synthetics. And um, so oh, that was the one thought I didn't finish. And then I'll, I'll let you guys go. But when I was saying that I was kind of changing up my routine for soaking badger brushes, I think in the past, just letting them sit in the hot to warm water for like longer than five minutes, I think that the, the heat does kind of drop down a bit. So I've kind of been trying to like keep the soaking between like two and a half to maybe like four minutes. Um, it's not like I have a timer out, but um, I, I um, just prefer to be able to feel it when it's still a little bit closer to the temp that I put in the, uh, the scuttle. And that's, again, kind of why I've been picking up on some of the different feelings of the knots and how the heat retention is. Because, again, the reason why I use Badger is without dipping, if you keep working that lather long enough, the hair is going to naturally kind of um, spring or push that water towards the tips. 
and whereas the synthetic you have to like keep dipping keep dipping keep dipping so it's really just kind of like a it's it's more zen for me to use the badger but i've also realized that you know trying to assemble it a little bit quicker without kind of wearing away too much of the skin has been kind of helpful so I, i'm i'm just like you guys I, I still experiment with stuff and but i feel i feel quite a bit more happy with kind of where my shaves have landed and um yeah, I don't know. The, the only thing I'll mention, you guys, is is the Gillette Winter Blades have kind of been like the, I think, the best find for this year. And they don't seem totally impossible to get. I, I'm pretty sure I got them from an eBay uh, supplier. But I know they got picked up by like the Razor Company. I forget if they're in Canada. Um, I don't know if they're still available. But I would check out the, is it the, is it 55 pack? Or the 110 pack? um of the Gillette winners they're a really solid blade the longevity I think for me was you know around five six shaves um I can still kind of test that I've used maybe like three or four of the Gillette winners I think they're really good the level of sharpness I think is relatively high maybe compared to like a Kai if I were to say Kai is like an A plus sharpness for me the um, Gillette winners are probably like a B plus maybe A minus, and the smoothness is is definitely like an A. So um, if you guys haven't tried that, that would be like my one suggestion as far as like, I've tried a lot of different blades this year, but out of all the Gillettes, the, the ones that really stick out are like the Gillette um, Black Winners, the Platinum. So anyway, I know it's a long video, but um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I don't know when my next video will be. Like I said, I did a special night shave just for you guys so I could squeeze one in. But, um, you know, with no pre-shave, no shower, that was a really, really good shave. It's it's pretty close. This is always the hardest to get underneath the chin. So, I don't know. Let me know if you guys have any comments, any questions. Again, stay safe. I hope you guys are all doing well and enjoying your shaves, but um, I'm sure I'll catch up with you guys sometime soon, right? Take care.